Um, all right, we are pleased to be joined by Trailblazers assistant coach David Vanterpool, who joins us now on Trailblazers courtside. Coach, thanks for the time. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm good. Good, good. Hey, uh, you guys taking this 11-game win streak in stride. I'm, I'm sure not much is being said internally about all of this. You guys are keeping very good perspective about this win streak while the rest of us just kind of sit back and, and gloat about it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's a little hard just because it's so early in the season. So, you know, we just kind of have to take each thing game by game. By game. You know, I know as cliche as that may sound, it, it's kind of true right now for us. Coach, I want to ask you about about the offense. Uh, it, it it's just seemingly flowing so well, and, and Coach Stotts uses the word flow a lot. And I want to ask you to kind of unpack what that means for listeners, because we're accustomed to sets, plays, go to right. closers. And when you say flow and playing in flow, can you just kind of talk for the listeners a little bit about what that means? Well, um, you know, I guess kind of similar to you know using an analogy, just like a river as a river flows flows downstream um you know it's pretty free and you know it just kind of flows kind of eloquently and it looks looks nice when you see water kind of flowing generally and you know with us with our offense when we when we get down and we kind of just flow into what's a, what's considered a transition of some type of secondary break but there's no rhyme or reason there's no nothing is actually set up by us that we have to actually adhere to we have small rules here and there but other than those rules, the guys are allowed to play and be creative and, and basically just flow into the things that, that they normally would do. Coach, I want to talk about the defensive end now because, generally speaking, teams that buy in on the defensive end are unselfish on the offensive end. And, and so it's almost a prerequisite to be able to flow offensively and have guys uh, trust one another and trust that the ball is going to find guys for shots that the defense has to be a, a end of the floor where guys are tied together. And the team is steadily getting better defensively, and the defense is, is solid. But can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about guys' commitment on that end? Well, you know, in my opinion, you're absolutely right. But, like, you know, the bottom line is on defense, you have to have a huge trust factor. Um, you know, all of, the, all of the parts have to work together to make sure that the other team doesn't get either a basket or a clean look at, look at a shot. And when you have to trust another another person basically to have your back if you get beat or be in the right position just to help them out, it, it transfers over when you go to the offensive end. And, and, you know, guys having that trust and having that commitment to the defensive end, I mean, it's a really a testament to their character and, and to the attitude that they came into to, uh, to training camp with. And, you know, they, they bought in from the beginning, some more a little more reluctant than others. But, you know, after everybody basically bought in, um, you know, we've, we've gained so much trust with each other and have grown confidence-wise as, as we've seen results during the course of the season. And it transfers over to the other end. We get, get a stop, and, and guys are excited about getting stops, just as excited as they are about scoring. And, um, you know, they get down the other end and trust each other with the basketball. So, you know, it makes the ball move around the court a little bit better. It's a lot better uh, basketball to watch as well as it is to coach. There's a whole lot of freedom happening with this team. And uh, assistant coach David Vanterpool joining us here on Trailblazers Courtside. From your perspective, coach, what's been the biggest difference maybe this year as opposed to last year? Well, a lot of the attitude. Uh, you know, I, I spoke before a little bit about confidence. And, you know, I really think that's very important in, in the NBA. Um, you know, you see teams that sometimes – uh, exceed expectations and, and their confidence is at a, a high level and they play very confidently and you see other teams that that fall below that and a lot of times confidence has a lot to do with it and you know we step into every game right now feeling feeling like we should win and it wasn't so much the case last year all of the time um, I know we you know we we were as positive as possible especially as coaches and you know you had guys that believed or said that they believed but you know, sometimes you revert back to old habits when you get on the court and don't necessarily trust the things that you've been taught and the things you've been working on. And this season has it's been, you know, really uh, consistent as far as us really having a belief in our in, in the things that we've taught and a uh, belief in the things that, that we've tried to, to maintain and get better at each and every day. And, you know, it's, it's been a, uh, wonderful to watch the guys have some success on the court during the game. Interesting, Coach. You know, uh, there's a spiritual principle that says you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Against the Knicks, there was a possession when Damian Lillard triple threat and drove and dunked the ball, and not a single Nick got close enough to even <laughs> foul him. It, it, it just stood out to me like, wow. It stood out to and, everyone. And, and, and I make that point because I'm watching the Trailblazer team as the season goes on. 
subtly get better guarding the ball because there were more straight line drives uh, in the first couple of games. And I can't think of the last time I saw a player against the Trailblazers set defense get a straight line drive and good look. Yeah, um, you know, and that, that was actually something that, that, that we as coaches challenged the players uh, to become a lot better at, at that individual isolation type of defense and keeping guys in front, especially on wing players. Um, you know, we did notice the same thing early on in the season. And, and guys challenged themselves as well, um, you know, just to make sure that they weren't putting their teammates in a tough spot where they kind of had to come over and, you know, maybe risk getting dumped on just because someone wasn't wasn't doing their part in the defense. And, I mean, again, they, they've just consistently stepped up with every single challenge as, as they've come. And, you know, again, it, it's, been, it's been exciting just to see them grow uh, in, in this defense and in the concept of things and, and just in their confidence, again, on the defensive end and trusting each other. Having that stability, Coach, and being able to – throw whoever you want out on the floor and having trust in them um that that's got to be a a very big and a nice thing for the entire coaching staff because i know fans sit back and they see from this year uh, you know as as opposed to last year and just see that bench unit and how vastly improved it is uh it it gives you guys a ton of confidence as coaches knowing that whoever you throw out there you've got trust in yeah well i mean it's it's always comfortable feeling and you know the the thing is we, we try to temper a lot of that as well because of you know, just like anything, we see so we see mistakes and we see things that we can improve on consistently. So, um, you know, the work basically never stops, and you can't be satisfied. You always gotta gotta keep cracking at it and and look at ways to improve because you, you know as well as I do this this season is long and and this game will humble you quickly. So, you know, we try not to be too overexcited about things and understand, make guys understand. Okay, even though they didn't score a basket here, and even though. Uh, you know, it looks like things went the way we wanted it to. We have to improve in this area because next time this may hurt us. So, you know, we try to stay on top of them with those type of things. And, and, and again, they, them being bought in all the way makes makes it really a, a, a pleasure because they're looking for, you know, what they can do to improve. You know, Coach, talking about everybody trusting and, and, and buying in, you know, I have a chance to, to hear the, the player-to-player conversation in timeouts occasionally, but there's one thing that has stood out to me about this team is that everybody has a voice. I mean, last night you guys had to change the rotation. You had to play a lot of players that either hadn't been playing or hadn't been playing much. And everybody still was able to come to a timeout and have some input or have a voice, whether it was Will Barton. And I watch, and and I haven't been around many teams where everybody could have a voice because sometimes if you're that guy and you don't play and you get to play, you get to play, but you don't get to talk. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, you know, Coach Stotts also has really been great at, at – making sure that the guys take some ownership in what we're doing. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to get guys to buy into, you know, your commands or something like that if you're trying to lead a lead a team or a group of people. But, you know, the fact is that, you know, they have to take some ownership in a lot of it and really believe in things. And it gives them also a better opportunity to, to take some belief and some ownership and, and have some, some say-so and, and a couple little different things. You know, if they feel like, you know, this assignment may cause for this type of situation and maybe it's something that we can explore and figure out what works best. And, you know, again, it, it shows the care, it shows the trust that we have in them and, and the trust that they have in, in our coaching staff and our team and our concepts. So, I mean, it's been a great thing just, just to just to have guys even willing to, to step up and, and voice that opinion. You have a lot of guys, like you said, that don't necessarily play, that don't even feel comfortable enough to say anything. So, um, I think it's great. You get different different perceptions and different uh, vantage points, and and you get an opportunity to maybe learn something in the process. Well, Coach, uh, Phoenix is a team that can be a thorn in your side. We know that already about them. They can play a little bit of defense. They can shoot some threes. Um, what did you guys – I know you guys practiced this morning here in Portland. What did you guys do to maybe game plan against those Suns for tomorrow night? Well, I mean, this is, this will be the, I don't know, umpteenth time we played them this season already, it seems. Um, I know during the regular season we haven't played them a lot, but we got a chance to see them in the preseason. And, and um, you know, just knowing, you know, first of all, they're going to play hard. And that's something that you can't simulate in practice or in anything, um, you know, that those guys actually really, really compete. And we, we know that we're going to have a – a tough time with this team being especially a Western Conference team. We know how tough the West is this season. Um, and, if, you know, for us, staying consistent with, with our uh, our principles and what we what we believe in is, is going to be big. Um, you know, 
they got they have uh, the Morris twins who both can step out and shoot playing that four position. So we'll have to adjust a little bit to those type of things. Channing Fry also can step out and shoot. So I mean, you know, having to adjust a bit to those situations makes makes things a lot more difficult for us because they can spread the floor and you know get get Dragic or some of those other guys driving into the paint. But you know, again for us, staying consistent with what we're doing, being being really diligent as far as our defense goes, and 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 making sure that we limit them from doing some of the things that they are really have been really good at doing this season. Excellent. Trailblazers assistant coach David Vanterpool joining us live from Phoenix uh, as the Blazers get set to take on the Suns tomorrow. Coach, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. I know you guys just landed, and uh, you're probably about dinner time for you guys, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I might try to scare up some turkey or something around here, but I appreciate the time. I appreciate it. All right, Coach, best of luck tomorrow as you guys go for 12 in a row, and we'll catch you back here uh, next week, Monday, when the Trailblazers take on the Pacers. All right, Coach, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, there it is. Uh, there he is, Trailblazers assistant coach David Vanderpool. 